Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming to my talk, Lessons from the Boss. So my name is Juan Jose Lopez. I am a software developer at Google Montreal. It's been six years that I'm there. I am part of the Cloud Vulnerability Research Team. Uh, I'm into fuzzing, and I'm going through a kernel hacking phase. So a little bit of the agenda, what we're going to talk about today, I'm going to talk to you about Buzzer, which was briefly covered in the previous talk. We're going to briefly talk why it exists, what it does, what we have learned so far from uh, developing Buzzer and using it, and also some areas of future research that I think may be helpful for UPF. So first, let's start with the whys. Um, first, uh, Buzzer focuses on the verifier, mostly, and the verifier is complex. It has around 20 li 20k lines of code, last time I checked, which was for a previous release. And you just need to state the purpose of the verifier to understand how hard the task it has at hand it is, uh, just to prove that an EBPF program is safe, to be loaded into a kernel. And I mean, how do you prove that something is safe, right? Like, uh, if it was easy, like, I'll be out of a job as a vulnerability researcher. Uh, well, also, like, other people have done a lot of research on, um, on fussing verifier. Like, it's been some effort on porting it to user space. Like, my colleague uh, at CBR, Simon Scannell, posted a blog post uh, about porting a verifier in user space, which turned out to be very hard. And then also I like to think that Bosser is a way to interact with UPF in a different manner, like more at a low level, writing bytecode, low level stuff. For me personally, this was the best way to learn how UPF works, just like going through the hurdle of like passing the verifier and then learning about all the possible features and the possible things that could go wrong. Uh, for me personally, this is the best way I could learn, but of course, like some other people uh, learn differently. Um, now, some people may say, okay, well, why bother doing <laughs> research in all this space? Like, after all, like, you need to be pretty privileged to load that EVPF program into the kernel. And that's true, and I think that was the right decision. Like, that was taken like, back in 2021, I think. Um, I will say that uh, EVPF is gaining adoption, adoption there, and it's going to be more and more common that you find yourself as an attacker in an environment where you have things like cap EPF, or other capability that allows you to load EPF programs into the kernel. And suddenly, when you land as, a, as an attacker in that space, like you have this whole at, uh, attack surface now in front of you that you could have used. And you may also say, like, okay, well, Syscaler is already doing a great job at finding bugs. And that is true as well. Um, Syscaler does an amazing job. And we actually had plans to integrate Buster with Syscaler. Um, it's the previous talk. Like, I think we should converge into one single place. Like, I, I second that motion. It's just that uh, so far it's been only me and at most other person working on Buzzer and like priority shifts sometimes, so I don't really have that much time. Uh, and also like Syscaller takes a look more, I, I will call like more memory corruption like type of box. And here we are focusing mostly on passing the verifier assumptions, bypassing the verifier assumptions. So we're looking more, we're fussing for logical issues instead of for memory corruption issues, if that makes some sense. And finally, well, a bug in the, in the verifier can mean a local previous escalation exploit. Uh, this is an explo uh, a screenshot of an exploit I wrote back in June. Uh, of course, it's illustrative purposes. The, the exploit itself had cap PPF, just to prove that it works. Uh, I'm going to talk more about this bug and explain what went wrong there and what we learned in a little bit. But you can clearly see, yeah, you can go from all the way from a normal user to root uh, pretty easily. And this is a pretty recent uh, kernel. Uh, release. Okay, so now that we talk on the why, let's talk a little bit on the what. What is Buzzer? Well, Buzzer is a fuzzer for the eBPF verifier. We focus mostly on finding a logical, logical box in the verifier. We provide a set of tools to write eBPF programs very easily, and the core idea of Buzzer uh, gathers around this, uh, uh, the concept of strategies. Uh, what is a strategy? Well, you can test, you can think about it as a first test case for eBPF. So a uh, strategy of uh, Buster is written in Go. So a strategy must adhere to this interface. A uh, strategy has three main jobs. First, it's responsible for saying, we're going to generate this set of eBPF programs. Okay, you, it can be anything. It can be random arithmetic and logic operations and jumps. It can be a bunch of helper, helper functions, K functions, etc. Then it's going to pass this uh, program to the Buster machinery, which is going to run it. In, it's going to pass it through a verifier and return the verdict as well the co as the coverage. 
And then the strategy is responsible for deciding how to act based on the verifier's uh, decision. Did it pass? Did it not pass? If it passed, maybe you want to add it to a set of interesting programs. If it didn't pass, just go ahead and generate a new program and start all over again. And third, and most importantly, and most critically, is it's going to determine when a possible bug happened. Of course, like if you are fussing maybe for arithmetic and logical operations, like your bug conditions may look in a different way if you're like writing two arbitrary maps or whatever. Um, well, the rest of Buzzer just provides tools to interact with the kernel via syscalls and to get metrics. This is an example of uh, two strategies. One of what they call the playground, which, as the name sounds, is just there for you to experiment with VPF. It starts with just a simple program that just moves zero to R0 and then exits. Uh, but then also more interesting, like you can see more in the lower part of the table that strategies can have access to things like metrics collection. And we have one strategy called coverage base that, as its name implies, just tries to optimize for coverage in the whole verifier. Uh, yeah, like you can just see which lines of code you have covered with your program. Recently, thanks to the work of an intern that we had over the summer, we have VTF support. So now we can describe uh, VTF and we can embed program, uh, VPF programs with its uh, VTF description into the kernel and this opens the door to a lot of new functionality like uh, helper functions, uh, kfunks, uh, etc. Uh, we have a coverage visualization. You can see which lines of code you have uh, touched with your EPF programs. And this also helps you, like, if you are working on a strategy, you may want to maximize, like, hitting certain areas of the verifier. This also gives you some idea of how well your strategy is doing. And also recently, I just implemented uh, graphing for uh, coverage, which also turned out to be very interesting, especially when we add new features, we can see, like, how much more coverage we're getting. Okay, so... That's, in a nutshell, what Buzzer is, just a tool chain, a tool set, if you will. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about what we have learned so far, and for that, I'm going to talk about two bugs that we have found using Buzzer. The first one, which is also the very first bug that Buzzer found, is uh, 2020, CV 2023-2163. Um, we already published a blog post with more details on this bug. Uh, you can find it here at this link. I'm going to give you just the overall details. I'm not going to go too much into exploitation because I don't have time. Uh, but uh, the gist of this is that there was a bug in the verifier branch pruning logic. Now, uh, what is the verifier branch pruning logic is that since the verifier needs to know what is the state of your registers at every possible point of your program, this sometimes means that it needs to explore all the possible branches. But uh, for efficiency, if the verifier can prove that if the verifier can prove that it can reach a safe state through a certain branch, and then there are other branches that uh, are similar to this previously proved safe branch, it's not going to touch them. It's just going to say, okay, this other one is very similar to the one that I just proved is safe. So for time purposes, I'm not going to go through that. Um, but what we did with Buster is that we generated a bunch of random ALU and jump operations. And then in state number six, which you see there uh, in, a, in an epilogue, we embedded a pointer arithmetic operation. So we were getting a pointer to a map element and then adding a random register to it and then trying to write to it. If we saw the value being written at, in user space when we retrieve it, then we know that the program is fine. But if the value was not there, then we knew that there was possibly an out-of-bounds uh, operation, right, right out-of-bounds operation there that we might want to investigate there. And then Buster would just stop and dump the program to us for manual analysis. So a bit more details. Uh, actually, like the program here uh, is exactly the program that caused the bug. And what the verifier was first doing is that it, it was going through the false branch of every jump operation first. So it first started evaluating the path one through six without uh, skipping anything. And in state number five, I think. Yeah, five, you see that R6 is set to zero. R6 was the register that was being randomly chosen to be added to a map pointer element. And the only value that the verifier allows you to add to a map pointer element is zero. So in this case, the verifier was, well, this is fine, this is safe, this register is always zero. Um, and another important concept here is that when there is a security sensitive operation like pointer arithmetic, the verifier will mark 
the registers in that operation as precise, and it will take a bit more care with the, uh, what happened to those registers. However, the bug here was that not all registers involved in that preciseness was being marked as precise. So if you see here on state number four, R9 is actually contributing to the value of R6. And in the context of this book, R9 was not being marked as precise. So what this will mean is that once the verifier goes through branch one to six, um, it will assume that the rest of the branches were equivalent to this one, and therefore it will prune them. But uh, what happens at runtime is that the path that the program will take was one, two, four, six, completely bypassing the setting to R6 to zero. Um, what this means is that we had a register with an arbitrary value that we could just add to a pointer, and that was enough to write a local privilege escalation bug. Uh, exploit, sorry. So yeah, uh, the verifier was missing marking R9 as contributing to the preciseness of R6. And what did we learn from all of this? Uh, this was the first bug that Buzzer found. Uh, it was pretty exciting to work on this. It was pretty exciting to see your, your project really work. Uh, well, but the first thing I learned is that the verifier has a very complex job to do. <laughs> and it's very, it's, the verifier is a very complicated piece of software that does an amazing job, like don't get me wrong, like it's amazing how you can keep track of so many things, but of course like, and something as complicated as this, there's going to be holes in the logic somewhere. And my colleagues and I agreed that this bug may have been very difficult to spot via manual analysis just because of the multiple state tracking and multiple variables that go into all of this. Like sometimes we were, the, this is the simplified version of the program actually, like the original program that caused the crash had something around like 200 instructions. So minimizing all that and then figuring out what was going on, well, it was pretty hard. Um, and then uh, if someone comes and asks me, okay, what is a good place to start looking for or keep looking for vulnerabilities in the verifier, I'll say it's branch pruning. Uh, it's just uh, something complex that with natural coaching, just the software development cycle, like I would expect that more bugs will manifest here, even though I, we're still yet to find new bugs with Buzzer in this area, but I wouldn't discard it. Okay, so that was the first one. The second one is more recent, uh, is CV2024-41003. I like to call this one as a more traditional eBPF verifier bug, and the reason is because there were quite a few like this back in 2021. Again, my colleague Simon Scannell found one, Valentina Palmiotti, Chompy also found another one, etc., etc. Um, this bug had to do with the register limit tracking in the verifier. So again, the verifier is always trying to make sure that it knows which possible values a register might take, and this also translates to ranges. Like, it's impossible to say like, oh, the register will always have this value. No, sometimes you have ranges. So there was a bug introduced around kernel 6.8 that uh, during branches operation, branch operations, you could cause an off by one in the upper limit, uh, the lower limit as well, of <laughs> registers. And that was enough to confuse the verifier into thinking that the register at runtime will have a value zero, but in reality had a value of one. So there are three key points to understand this bug. Um, just bear with me because it might get a bit confusing, but just bear with me a little. First is that the program on the right is uh, mathematically impossible for that bran the branch operation, the not equal for the false branch to, to happen. It's, it's mathematically impossible because no matter what value you read from a map, arbitrary value, the second operation you're doing, you're doing an OR operation uh, with a two, which means the second bit is always going to be set as on. And then you're comparing with a value whose second bit is set as zero. Um, so therefore, it's, it's just impossible. And I have to admit that I spent a ridiculous amount of time thinking of a way to trigger the false condition, but then I convinced myself, okay, this is mathematically impossible. So, um, But however, the verifier will nonetheless try to explore and see what happens during this uh, uh, false branch. And when it analyzes the false branch, uh, after it's analyzing, it will do something that's called, uh, it will update the state of the registers for that false branch. And for this, what it does is that it creates a fake register that's initialized to the constant value that you're comparing against. I assume this is for reusability of the code. It's actually pretty nicely written. Like you just initialize your, you just create your fake register and then plug into a function and then you have this function that you can use no matter if you're comparing with a constant or, another, or two registers. Uh, 
but uh, when you do this analysis, you do an intercept in the bar off of the, the registers. Now, what is a bar off? A bar off just tells you what knowledge you have about the bits of a register at this point. Like you know, like these certain bits, at, uh, you, you know the value of these certain bits, and this is the value basically. And the result of the intersect of the bar of, of both the register and the constant was uh, the constant, but uh, what you can see here the operation, like the operation will, uh, will conduct a bunch of and and not and etc. Uh, but the end of the result, it will be this sine 32 max comma zero. What does this mean? It means that this is the bar of that of a constant of sine 32. <laughs> and then the verifier will assign this bar off to both R1 and your constant. And now, if you're still following me, what this means is that the verifier has now updated the value of a constant, and now it thinks that the constant has a different value. Like we managed somehow to update the value of the constant in the false branch. Uh, but of course, like the false branch will never be taken, right? So this shouldn't matter. Like you can never reach this weird state and abuse abuse it. And that's where point number three comes. Uh, the same way that happens that you have a fake register for the false branch, you also have it for the true branch. And for the true branch, we are passing a pointer to the same fake register, which means that everything that just happened on the false branch is actually retrievable from the true branch. Or in other words, we can influence the results of the true branch based on uh, the bad math, well, not bad math, of the bad results of the false branch. And one little thing that it does on the true branch now is that it will adjust the limits of the register. So if the value that you're just comparing is equal to the max value that the register can take, it will decrease it by one. Um, well, what happens now if we go back to our program and in the map, we provide a value that's equal to sine max 32. Well, when we reach the bugging condition, which is the fourth row here, we see that the max value that the verifier thinks it can have is Fe instead of FF. And then if we do a bunch of other operations, namely a subtraction and another comparison, we can converge the verifier into thinking that the register has a value of zero when reality has a value of one. Um, so yeah, and this little discrepancy is enough to write a local pre-escalation uh, exploit. Um, what did we learn? Well, yeah, like a simple off by one is enough to fool the, the verifier. But also like what I found fascinating about this bug is that it was fairly recently introduced in kernel 6.8. So you can just see how the evolving nature of software just means that mistakes are going to happen. And like it's then it's important for us to keep looking for those, for those bugs and uh, keep working on them. Uh, this is a very well area. This is a very well, well, well understood area, as I was saying. Uh, many bugs have happened like this, and we may think, oh, well, now the verifier is very sound. This is not going to happen. Well, mistakes will happen, and that's normal. Uh, another thing is that when we found this bug, we were developing the coverage based strategy uh, in Buzzer. And while I was debugging it, I was also on the side looking at the verifier logs. So Buzzer can output the verifier logs, and I started seeing this. As the coverage went up, I started seeing these weird environment violation messages on the verifier, and that caught my attention. I was like, okay, well, what is this? And then I started digging down until I eventually found the bug, uh, which means that like side channels of information are very valuable as well for when you're fussing the verifier. But this also means that there is a big yet to be solved problem in Buzzer, which is when you verify an APF program, you have this set of assumptions of what the state of the program of the registers can be at any point. But then that information is gone the moment the verifier exits. And when you execute your program, like maybe there was a very subtle off by one bug, but you will never see it because it never leads to like a crash or something else. So how do you extract those assumptions of the verifier at verify time and then validate them against the runtime, which may uh, the answer may as well be in the test oracle in state embedding, as uh, the previous talk was saying, but at least in Buster is still a uh, yet to be solved problem. And yeah, that's the first uh, uh, area of future research that I like to propose here, like how you compare the verifier assumptions against what actually goes down at runtime. Uh, another thing is that it's, uh, it'll be interesting to expand support of k funks and other helper functions now that Alanis Negroni are interns uh, as support for BTF. Better coverage for fuzzing is always good, and 
who knows, maybe fussing uh, eBPF and other platforms once support for that arrives. And that's everything I have for you. So if you have any questions, I may now take them. I, I was just wondering if these uh, minimized uh, exploits uh, that you found were they persisted anywhere as regression tests so we don't run into them again? Yeah, they were. Uh, Daniel Bogerman, who fixed it, wrote tests for that as well. Yes. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Wait, wait, the second bug, can it be called a speculative execution bug in the BPF virtual CPU? Uh, sorry, I didn't hear you properly. The, the second bug you mentioned, can yeah. it be called a speculative execution bug in the BPF virtual CPU? I am not fully sure how it's so speculated to the yes. false branch that is never I see, executed I see. and we yeah. observe the effects of yes. that speculation yes. on the true branch. Yeah, 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 you're absolutely right. Yes. Like when you actually explore that branch, the, the very part tells like, oh, speculative execution and then like these uh, side, side effects happen. Yeah. I guess we can call it this way. Yep. <laughs> never, to, never thought about it like that, but yeah. Yeah, I had the question in the beginning, I mentioned that the verifier is root-only interface, and I wonder why is that, like, say, if I'm attaching the program to my own socket or device in my user namespace, why would anybody, anybody care and uh, prevent that? Uh, sorry, I didn't get it properly. Can, can you repeat? So you mentioned that the BPF verifier yeah. is the root-only interface. Yes. Why is that? Why would anybody care if I'm attaching BPF program to my own socket or my own device? Well, the, we at, uh, we attach programs just to socket or to own devices just to be able to interact with verifier, right? Like if uh, you were able to enter a, another VPF program through another interface, like of course, like if you also go through a verifier and you can also tr trigger it, like you could also uh, execute it. Like you could also like cause bad behavior. So it's not true to... Uh, no, no. <laughs> Maybe I could try to answer your question. It's uh, not inescapable. It is true capable. It is true root. So even if you are in, inside the user NS, you're still not a real root yeah. because of bugs like this. And same with SCAP BPF. It's like true. You need user NS yeah. capability, either real root or SCAP BPF. So it's only because of potential bugs. Only because of well. You guys doing a good job finding all this. Box. <laughs> <laughs> right, thank you. <laughs>